the world gone mad. Yes. Where chickens are angry because they can't play frisbee with each other. <laughs> and carrots somehow magically become leaders of free nations. Up to someone. One woman steps up to do all that she can to make all of that shit right. Paramount Pictures proudly presents the story of one woman. Yeah. And her journey to become the one true kung fu master. I'm just playing. Give it up for Janet, ladies and gentlemen. Yay! I think everybody's trying to play, figure out the music that's playing. It's, is it very, very quiet? It's very quiet and mellow. Um, I was thinking I was going to be running late because. This evening, I happened to see a show by the Ha Man of South Africa, who is a gentleman, obviously from South Africa, who does tours of the United States and Europe, and I have known him since 2009 in Chicago, because I'm a Chicago girl, and I've done shows with him in 2012, and we have a CD of my poetry with him and stuff, and I even, because I moved here last October, I even made a point to stay in Chicago long enough so I could see him in Chicago, because I thought I might never see him again. And then I find out that he didn't go to Chicago this year, but he went to Austin this year, so I happened to see him today, and I'm like, awesome. So, um, and this, what you're actually hearing in the background, is a track of his that I have done stuff to, and so I thought, I'm just going to have this running while I'm reading these three pieces. I'm going to do a new one, as well as two things from shows that I did with him in the past. This first one is new. I wrote this Saturday. Morning. You said it was what? New. New shit. New shit. Um, I wrote it because of Veterans Day and the idea of giving some gratitude to the people I love. This is called Exempt from the Draft. I, I'm not in a military family. My, my father, because of the size of the family he raised, was always exempt from the draft. But when the Gulf War started, I heard my friends saying that they wanted to sign up to fight. And I was nervous that they would go that they'd be taken away from me. I know when you're young, you've got something to prove and combat shows off your machismo, but everyone, because they're young, think they're inevitable, they're, <laughs> they're invincible, and you're not. So, lucky me, my friends all stayed here and I didn't have to worry about all my chicks leaving their flock before their time. But you, you came from a military family, Army, Navy, the Marines. And I hear stories of your father stationed in Europe. And I hear you tell stories of flying at night to other countries, ready to fight. And maybe I'm the one who likes to keep the ones I love too close to me. But all I can say is that I'm glad I didn't know you in your military days because I'd worry too much. And this is only one reason why I'm grateful that you are here with me today. In 2012, I did a show with the Ha Man, and uh, this is the first piece I read in it, and it's called Been a World Leader. People can think that Americans are cocky and arrogant because we've been a world leader for so long. Because even though our cars are from Korea, our electronics are from Japan, and we owe China billions, better beers are from Germany, better wines and champagnes from France, because even though we've been thrust into this global economy that Al Gore pushed us into because he started the internet, us Americans still seem to want to rest on our laurels through the next millennium. But once I stop for a beer at a dive in Munich, oh, sorry, München, and when the female bartender tended bar for three old German men and one very out-of-place American, <laughs> barely knowing German, I figured I could just sit there, say a beer name on tap, pay in euros, and leave it at that. But at one point, after the jukebox in the far corner, one that I had never actually seen, started playing some new American-sounding pop song, one of the old German men turned to me and started yelling at me in German. 
Holding my Francis Gunner draft, my eyes turned to saucers. I was unable to say a word to this old German man yelling at me in a language I could not decipher. And that's when the bartender yelled at the old man in German, then in English, that they didn't play the song. I, the bartender, did. <laughs> so I smiled at the bartender and finished my beer, realizing that us Americans can still get in trouble without saying a word. Thanks. I'm something for the show that sounds a little happier. This one is called The Way You Tease Me. What I think I like the most about you are the way you always leave me wanting more. When you kiss me and we start to pull back, I want to cock my head and kiss you again. But I never know if you'll let me. What I think I like the most about you is the way you roll your sultry, deep voice over me like a wave of heat on a summer afternoon. You use a pause to tease me with your words until sweat dances down my hairline and tickles my neck. What I think I like the most about you is the way you slide your arms around my waist and make me just want to collapse in your grasp. And it makes me want to run my hands up and down your back until I hear you moan and sigh. What I think I like the most about you is the way that absence makes the heart grow fonder. And when we touch, you say we should take it slow, take our time, enjoy every moment. And you know, you couldn't be more right. What I think I like the most about you are the things that make me think I have to fight for you, are the things that make me second guess myself, because nothing's ever easy. Not you, not me, not relationships, not sex, not love. What I think I like the most about you is the wondering, is the waiting, is the teasing. That's what I like. This high-charged guessing game. The flirting, the first touch, the first everything. Thinking about the possibilities. Yeah, that's what I like. Force a habit, you're just used to it all the time. Give it up one more time for Janet, ladies and gentlemen. All right, all right.